I don't have good memories of the wedding. I think everyone who went had a great time, but I don't look back on that wedding and go, that was amazing. I go back, I look back and I go, that was a mistake. Welcome back to the Not Your Mama's History channel. My name is Chaney, and today we're going to have a conversation with my close friend, Abby Cox, about her plantation wedding. Now, my experience with plantation weddings is I've never been to one. I've had a couple friends who've had plantation weddings and invited me, and I've declined. There's never been a time in my life as a Black person that I haven't known that plantation weddings were wrong. Um, I just want you all to keep an open mind and open your heart to what she is going to say. These are her experiences and I really try to kind of put myself in the background and uh, let her voice her experiences on this issue. This is a woman who planned um, and had a plantation wedding and I am so grateful that she trusted me um, to help her tell her story. So today we have um, Abby Cox here, and um, Abby and I have been friends for years upon years. I promise you, one day we will talk about how we met, um, <laughs> but <laughs> we've developed this uh, really close friendship and um, really based on trust and understanding and also just being really fun history women. And Weirdos. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> and we've had this like connection and um, we've had so many conversations about race um, and things like that. And uh, years ago, we were just like, wow, it would be so interesting if people had the ability to listen to our conversations about race. Um, and then I, I'm not sure when, I think you told me this year, um, that your first wedding was on a plantation. I, I was I was really shocked, but I, I wasn't, um, it, it's not, I know people who've had plantation weddings, so mm -hmm. um, it was not something like, don't ever talk to me again. <laughs> well, and the way I told you about it too was also like, Janie, I have to tell you something that I'm ashamed of. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I thought she was going to tell me that she murdered somebody, but we have that type of friendship that I would help her hide the body. So I was like, oh crap, I've got to Don't worry. hide the body. Don't worry, Fred from the FBI, I'm not a murderer. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so serious, but we're, mm -hmm. but um, we're in this place as, as a society where mm -hmm. things are shifting and changing and we're having these conversations. Um, so I wanted to have a conversation with you about how it came about and um, mm -hmm. where it started. So um, I guess the very first question is, um, how did the idea of a plantation wedding come about? Um, how did you find the plantation? Was it like on a site? Did you know from the very beginning when planning your mm -hmm. wedding that you would um, be doing a plantation wedding i was i've been like reflecting a lot about my mind like my mental state like what i was trying to think of so for everyone listening this wedding happened on in 2013 so i started planning the wedding in 2012. um my now ex-husband is not american he's not from the united states he's actually from sweden and we had half of the guest list was coming from Europe. I always knew I wanted a wedding and in a historic home because I'm me. <laughs> and I wasn't going to have a wedding at like the Holiday Inn. <laughs> you know? um, it's like, that's just me. And, and I will say this wedding wasn't what I actually wanted in a wedding. What, what I actually wanted in a wedding was, was not this, but I made decisions about my wedding based off of the fact that half of my guest list was coming from a different country that I wanted them to see 
the United States outside of the normal tourist destinations. I wanted them to see the countryside. Um, and then also my fiance at the time did not want to do a wedding in Indiana or Louisville where I'm from. So it had to be in Virginia. You know, while I had very specific intentions, like I wanted somewhere that was inclusive. I wanted somewhere that was safe for them because I know how Swedes like to throw down with the booze. And I didn't want people driving. I wanted it to be very insular. So I was looking for a big bed and breakfast that I could keep the entire bridal party at. And, but I also wanted it to be beautiful landscape, beautiful scenery. I wanted it to be outdoors. And obviously that just kind of goes hand in hand with a plantation home. And I love old homes. Like I just love old architecture. Um, but I never thought about the fact that it had plantation in the name. Like, you know, it's just like, Broof! like whatever. I just doesn't register. And, and like talking to you and like having that conversation come up, like that's obviously like my white privilege. The embarrassing part about this is that I worked at Colonial Williamsburg at the time. I interpreted slavery every day. <laughs> you, think, you think I would know? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. And it, like, the thing is, is like, that's just, that is very significant. Like that signifies like the amount of privilege. And I don't think anyone called me out on it. I don't think anyone, anyone said anything to me about it. And it was also really inexpensive, which is the thing as well, because I wasn't going to spend $20,000 on a wedding. I DIY'd a lot of it myself. And so the biggest expense was that venue. And, you know, yeah, it's, I don't have an excuse for it. I can tell you why I picked the location, but looking back, like, I was still just like, why, why did you, you're an idiot. Like, <laughs> like you're you're a dum dum, and it was beautiful. Like the location, I said to the link, like the the landscape there is stunning. Like you can't yeah. like beat the views. Like my mom said, that was the first time in her entire life she's ever seen the Milky Way. Um, so you know, it's it's one of those things. Like it's beautiful, but the house itself is riddled with trauma, um, and I overlooked it. No, none of your family or friends was like, huh. Mm -mm. Yeah. I think the, um, because my mom said, my mom and I were talking about this morning when we were walking the dogs and she was like, you know, you no." she's like, I didn't think about it either. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, we, it just wasn't, and she was like, the house had bad, it, like it had some negative energy to it because of the trauma in the house. And, but, but it, it, it never stopped us when I think it should have. Um, what did the site actually talk about any of the history, if anything? What did you hear about the site? And was slavery ever mentioned at all? Or did you see any, you know, memorials or anything to the enslaved population or any discussion? Mm -mm. The place that we picked was in the middle of nowhere, Virginia, outside of Richmond. It was about an hour and a half away from Williamsburg. And it is a private bed and breakfast. It is only used for weddings and events. It is not a museum. They do not interpret history there. They, and the, the house itself is the bed and breakfast. The only history is what is about the son who died during the war and the fact that that house was used as a soldier hospital. Like, I think at one of the last battles, like, you know, and like Lee went through, like, it, it has a significant story to, like, roll in the story at the end of the Civil War. But no, there was no discussion of enslaved people. There was no, I don't remember any sort of memorial. I don't even remember even seeing, like, foundations of, of homes. It, you know, it has a big permanent wedding tent set up and it has like the like arbor set up for the wedding over the orchard and, and things like that. And they just purely operated as a, as a wedding B&B. &B. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. literally it. That um, is, it is a money maker. Yeah. Uh, when did you realize that um, plantation weddings were problematic that it was 
uh, the wrong thing to do when when was that moment it was probably like a couple years ago right when it started to be actively discussed in 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 broader conversations um you know and i was like oh shit you did that oh shit i did that oh god i did you know (laughs) you know and it just kind of like oh man but so when it really started to come out because you know like i said the wedding was in 2013 which is a long time ago but it isn't a long time ago and And I think that just kind of speaks a lot about how conversations that have happened privately amongst like the black community about like the having a wedding at a plantation home, but it hadn't come to the forefront of, of white people, like, like no idea, like no, no clue. And so it was probably a couple years ago. And then just, you and I talking about it more and more recently. And that's just like, oh, oh yeah like I did that thing I also don't like thinking about that wedding so I don't spend a lot of brain space like pondering it I don't look at photos I don't you know like I said it was a very traumatic experience for me anyways so I don't I don't like thinking about it so when I do think about it and when it did get brought up it was within that context of you you made that choice um and it was a mistake Leading from that, um, I guess you kind of expressed a bit how you feel about it now, but how do you feel specifically about plantation weddings now? Because you, um, you've you done your research now, you're an active ally and actively working to tell the story of enslavement in this country. How do you feel about plantation weddings now? You know, I think you summed it up really well. Um, and it really like hit home for me when we were talking about it privately about how, you know, you wouldn't go to Poland and get married at Auschwitz. Like, you know, we've talked about my grandfather, having my grandfather go through something so traumatic, even though it was much shorter, you know, but I wouldn't want someone being like, oh yeah, I'm going to go to this like German POW camp and like have a wedding because look at this like officer's home. It's so pretty. <laughs> like, are you out of your mind? And, you know, And then like the insidious factor of we have the plantation home and then we have the enslaved people who are bound there and are forced to stay there, you know, so it's that juxtaposition of something so horrific and something so beautiful because these homes are beautiful. That's why, like we talked about with 12 years of slave, that's what makes it so painful is that to see such horror surrounded by such beauty it's so easy to be tempted by the beautiful plantation home. Think outside yourself for a minute. And I think that's what's hard for brides um, is you get so wrapped up in tunnel vision about one thing that you don't think outside of your, your little ring box. And, but if you take a moment to get outside that box, and you think about it from the bigger picture, then that's when you're like, you know what? No, this isn't okay. Why do you think people believe that having plantation weddings is appropriate? Like, um, I think that that's something that um, I struggled with in understanding. Um, I think it was actually really helpful to have people in my life that I love and care about who have made that choice to have a plantation wedding because it forced me to kind of uh, take a moment and look at a different perspective. Uh, Wrong is wrong, but at the same time, we have to come to a point where we understand people. Um, And I just, I just want to know, like, um, why do you think people believe that plantation weddings are appropriate? What, I mean, like from my, from my perspective, from my experience, it, it, it's not that they're going, oh yes, people were enslaved here. Perfect. Unless you're like a white supremacist and then like, (laughs) it's, it's ignorance and it's privilege because the thing is, is like, I didn't think about it. And so for me, what I assume a lot of people do is they go and they see big, beautiful landscapes, sweeping hills, 
you know, you see this beautiful home that looks nothing like the homes that we live in today. And it has all this beautiful details and light and textures. And you're thinking, oh, the photos are going to be beautiful. You know, it's going to be, everyone's going to have such a nice time coming here. You know, you don't think about the past. You think about the house at that particular moment. You don't think about the history, the disconnect between the history of the place, its current like existence. <laughs> but then as a white person, you don't have the connecting in between, you know, and that's, and that's just it. It's, it's because as a white person, I would have never experienced that home in the same way you experienced that home. Like, I didn't think about it that way because I didn't have to, you know, and I never would have had to. You don't have that knowledge and that empathy there because you, you never were taught to think about those things in that way. And that's like what we're going through now, right? As like white people is we're being, <laughs> there is a reckoning happening with the like, pull the curtain back. Do you see all of this? And then you go, oh. Yeah. Oh crap. Um, and, and I think that's just what it is. It's, it, you know, I have never seen anyone come and go to a, pick a home like this from a place of malice or a place of, of oppression. It comes from a place of ignorance and it comes from a place of selfishness um, because it was absolutely a selfish decision on my part um, to have my wedding there. It was, it was, it was selfish in that it's what I wanted, but if I wanted to have a safe space for all of the Swedes to, to like party and have a throwdown of a wedding, I should have had it at a hotel, you know? Yeah. But I said, I had to have the aesthetic. <laughs> I mean, all, I think a lot of the pushback um, I personally get when I talk about mm -hmm. ending plantation weddings is that people say that there is trauma everywhere. Bad things yeah. happen everywhere. Slavery mm -hmm. was everywhere, especially on the East Coast, but we know that there uh, was slavery mm -hmm. westward, but um, on the East Coast, the soil is soaked with it, um, mm -hmm. as well as indigenous places. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, places where um, on indigenous land, which yeah. it's everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> all right? Uh, and so, but I try to drive home that um, plantations weren't just a place where some enslaved people died. These were specific places of enslavement, forced labor camps. Mm -hmm. um, and the purpose of a plantation was not a home. So I think that's something that um, I try to drive home to people that um, plantations were not their primary focus was a work site. Uh, so when we look at plantations and plantation homes, we see the plantation home and we're like, this is a house, this is a home. Plantations, that was not the primary function of a plantation. And so I think we really need to start re-educating ourselves mm -hmm. as to the purpose of a plantation. Um, and I, I just want to know, like, if someone had pushback mm -hmm. uh, while you are planning your wedding, which I know <laughs> planning weddings is crazy. Uh, if someone yeah. had been like, so maybe if I had known you back then, um, and I had been like, so girl, um, this is problematic. Um, what do you think that you would have done? How do you think you would have felt? Um, hypothetically? <sighs> This is hard because obviously I've matured a lot since then. I've grown up a lot. Like I was in my mid twenties, mid to like, like 26, 27, 28 then. Mm -hmm. I'm 34 now and people grow and people change. I would like to think that what with you and our relationship, because we've always had this relationship that if you said that to me, I would have checked myself very quickly because of just the sheer fact from even a very selfish perspective I would have wanted you there like I would have wanted you there to celebrate with me I would have wanted you in photos with me I would have wanted to celebrate that with you because you were so I'm gonna cry you're so important to me and 
the idea that I would like, and you, if you had gone, Abby, like, I can't go. I can't be there. So I would have been like, fuck it, flip the table. <laughs> I'm not doing it. You know, and I, my response would have been different at certain points within the wedding mm-hmm. planning. But like, if you had said, Abby, you can't do that. Like, here's why. In the beginning, before I had even done anything, I would have been like, oh, 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 God. Oh, no. What do I do? Katie, what do I do? (laughs) You know, (laughs) I would have been like, okay, like, help me. Like, can you help me do this? You know, if you had, the wedding was like, early June. And so if you had come up to me like June 1st, I probably would have flipped the table and be like, I don't know. I don't know. If you're going to a wedding at a plantation wedding, or you get a invitation to a plantation wedding, what is the effective way of, of approaching the bride and groom about their plantation weddings? Like, what do you think is the most effective way? I think it depends on your relationship with the person, you know, it, you know, are you like a second cousin who's just kind of like getting the, I have to invite you because I'm required, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like, like, you know, it depends because the thing is, is yeah, when you're a bride at that point in time, the mental, the ability to like your spoons, you know, if you go into like the concept of spoons, you don't got a lot of spoons at that point because all of your spoons are covered up in, in, in just, you know, your mother-in-law is doing this, the father, your father's doing this. You have some aunt like four states away who's throwing a hissy fit that this fifth cousin wasn't invited because they're always invited to family stuff. How dare, you know, and you're just like, I just want to get married. (laughs) And then you have like just the mental stress of getting married and like what that entails that, yeah, if you're like a second or third cousin and you're not, or you're not close, like you're, you just got like the required invitation. (laughs) You know, I don't, I don't know if it's really going to be an effective conversation. Like I, I can say like, I probably wouldn't go there. I would probably just be like, right. you know, because it's just that relationship. If you're close to the person, you've got to get in there fast because I do think there's a window and it ties it to the deposit. Like if, if she puts the deposit down for a $10,000 venue and she can't get the deposit back, I mean... It, you know, it's like, okay, well, we'll deal with this. Like, let's, let's figure out ways to write this issue while still moving forward because that's a lot of money. You know, and if you are in a situation that you've put the deposit down on a plantation wedding and you can't get out of it because they're expensive and weddings are expensive and, you know, you don't have the pandemic working in your favor in this way where you can get your money back and get out of it. But, you know, you've put the deposit down, you can't get it back. You get a lot of money as wedding presents through this process, like through getting married. And it's intended, obviously, to help start a home. It's intended to to make bigger purchases, you know. But I would strongly encourage that if you have already booked a plantation wedding and you can't cancel it, you can't change it, go through you're there. No one's gonna be like, you have to give up 10,000s of dollars, you know, because of this, Mm -hmm. but you can do small things, quiet things to help right that mistake. And that is like donating to the NAACP, the Southern Poverty Law Center, you know, ACLU, Black Lives Matter, you know, donate, donate some of your money that you get as wedding presents, you know, to help write that wrong like you like you say like make amends that way you know take a moment of silence before the ceremony to to acknowledge what happened there probably the most effective way is doing stuff like this and people within just society people who are married people who had plantation weddings to sit there and go hey this was a mistake this shouldn't have happened let's stop celebrating these weddings let's stop putting them in magazines let's stop putting them on bridal websites let's not feature them and you know so the wedding industry complex i think actually should play a, a big role in this too so that way it's not about 
going in and changing someone's mind at the last minute and fighting against like not winning odds, but just changing the discussion before you get engaged. Like, you know, don't pin plantation home weddings on your Pinterest board at three in the morning. But if you are close to someone who's getting married and she's looking at venues and you're worried that the couple is is gonna go down that path of the plantation home like run interception as quickly as you can like offer to go with them uh, put in like to get in there so they so you can be that voice of reason because if you just like slide into someone's dms being like you shouldn't do this this is racist like it's not it's not going to be effective you know like and i'm not saying this for black people i'm saying this for white people like this is what white people need to do like within this conversation is like that's how i would try to go about it like if i had someone who was getting married and they were like oh i want to do it like at this plantation home or abby where did you have your wedding i want to do it there i'd be like no that's not a good idea how about we we look at other options I, I don't know if you um, heard that actor Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively um, have recently apologized for their wedding at Boone Hall Plantation. Mm. Um, they have been gone further and they have donated um, a few million dollars to things like the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because um, Ryan Reynolds, I found that he is usually very quiet about um, the charities he gives to it. But I, I saw that they had recently, within the past few weeks, come forward and said um, it was wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. it was a mistake and we shouldn't have done it. And I, I was actually quite shocked to hear that from them. You are not wealthy. <laughs> Yet! Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> what steps have um, you taken uh, to mm -hmm. make amends to the ancestors and the descendants um, for having had a wedding on a plantation, aka a forced labor camp? Yeah. Um, <laughs> when it comes to the wedding itself, I, I have never done anything consciously to other than this conversation, because this is because I don't talk about my wedding. I don't I'm, I'm remarried, like I'm divorced, like the marriage, the wedding, all of that was so traumatic that I don't talk about it. I don't share photos from it. Like, so, so to like, I've not thought about like, oh, I should do something as a way to kind of have reparations or make amends for the wedding itself, because I don't like thinking about it. <laughs> I mean, I had to really like work through some trauma within that wedding itself. Um, and so, so I, I don't allow it to take up a lot of space in my brain. Obviously having this is a, was a very conscious decision with you. I wanted to talk about it in this capacity. I wanted to, to hold myself accountable publicly for it. And I wanted to also take this as a way for, for me to kind of help people, like to help white people go, okay, she made the mistake. She's owning up to it. You know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, being canceled for it. I'm not, you know, I'm, it's not dirty laundry being aired. Like, no, I'm here talking to you about it because I don't want people to go through the same thing that I went through. I don't want people to look back on their wedding and, and you know, I mean, geez, like if, if I was still married, like, <laughs> like, was, like, you know, like I don't want people to look back on something that's supposed to be so beautiful and go, I made a mistake. So, just trying to help normalize this conversation, trying to make this less scary for white people, because I mean, we talk about this and this is one of the reasons why we're like, we should have these conversations is because we have a lot of trust and we love each other and I trust you and I love you and I have earned your trust and you love me. And that, you know, to, to be able to kind of use me as an example for white people who might be uncomfortable 
like having these conversations, who might not know how to engage with these conversations, who might be scared that they're going to make a mistake because I could be making mistakes right now with you. I don't know. Like I'm trying really, really hard, but I might've said something that's triggered someone who's watching this that might've upset you. I don't know. You know, it's like, because I'm learning, I'm still learning in this process, but I wanted to take a moment with you to talk about this. And so that's kind of my very conscious decision when it comes to my donations and my, and my allyship. I'm very private about that. You know that. And I like, I, cause I was thinking about that. And I was like, I don't, I don't like talking about what I do or, or like where I donate to, because I, I think for white people right now, it's a lot of people are doing very performative allyship. And I didn't actually appreciate feeling like I had to be like, look what I did, look what I did, look what I did, look what I've done, look what I've done, you know, because I'm like, that's not why I do it. Yeah. And like, I, think, I don't, like, I, I that's don't. something I appreciate. Yeah. I, and, and I really appreciate that about you. And I, and I have to say, um, I would just like to say this very publicly that um, actually, um, Abby approached me about doing this months ago before the conversation was kicked back up again. Mm -hmm. um, this was something that uh, we've been kicking around for a while now. Um, and I would like to say that um, Abby is a real deal ally. Um, I think um, she she is not perfect. <laughs> um, she puts her foot in it a lot. <laughs> she says the wrong things and sometimes she does the wrong things. Um, but I've never met someone just so genuine and willing at every pass to put her privileges um, aside in order to push people forward and get more voices in the room. I, I won't go into super duper detail, um, but I just, I want it to be known um, that you are a real collaborator and you are a real ally. And I stand by you. And I thank you for having this conversation and, and speaking out because I know it cannot, it cannot be comfortable especially like airing um mistakes like <laughs> mistakes that are just like right now I feel that um the pitchforks have come out <laughs> for like every uh, and it, and it's kind of scary lastly I just want to know like I know you gave a lot of advice but like in a lovely package, what would be your advice to future brides and grooms thinking about plantation weddings? Like parting words, what, what is your uh, advice? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the wedding industrial complex. It's nothing more than the capitalistic bullshit system. Get married in your backyard with your friends and eat some tacos. It's great. <laughs> yeah, but we don't have to anymore and they're not necessary anymore. So hopefully, hopefully uh, any bride who's listening to this, who's, or like potential bride, she's thinking about it. Hopefully this has helped um, kind of shake that out. Absolutely. Um, Abby, thank you very much for having this conversation with me. Um, I really, really appreciate your honesty um, and how open that, how open you've been. Um, I think that there will be um, a few couples who will be able to take a lot from this and I think they'll appreciate it. I hope so. I'm, yeah, I mean, like, I hope so. And thank you for, for having me on to do this. Like, I'm so, I, I just love you. Here we go again. It starts. It just starts. Oh, right there, the conversation is like, Jay, I love you so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I hope that um, I hope that we're able to help and mm -hmm. that, you know, people who might feel, white people who might feel uncomfortable or, or ashamed or confused or defensive can see that it's like, no, hello. <laughs>
this it's is gonna be okay. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Like everyone makes mistakes, and that's like you say, like that's a part of the growth. That's just human nature. Like everyone's gonna make mistakes. Everyone grows. Everyone changes. We all have posts on Facebook, Janie, that none of us are proud. Of. <laughs> oh. 